And um, well, oh, I, yeah. you're in Alameda, correct? No, I'm not in Alameda. I'm actually in Contra Costa. I was born and raised in San Francisco. I do a lot of work in Oakland. I've done some work in Alameda and uh, came to Alameda by way of taking oh, part yeah. in the art fairs and coming to the art there? fairs. And um, I actually came to Alameda originally to find, you know, because I found out my father was stationed in Alameda as a Navy uh, SEAL. Oh, and wow. so uh, I wanted to find out more about him because I never met him. Wow. So that's how I came to, originally came to get to know about Alameda. Awesome. It, it, it's always interesting how people get to where they are, you know. So it, that's a, a beautiful way to open it up because back then you had freedom of travel. You could go where you wanted yeah. So you can get a fast pass and just go anywhere you want you know? to go. Now they don't have that. It's a clipper card. You got to pay it for everything, you know. Absolutely. Pay it for it. Well, th thanks for that colorful introduction. It's like taking a journey when we can't take a journey. So I always <laughs> love to speaking to artists because you never know um, where they came from and how they describe their journey. So thanks a lot for that. So that's Absolutely. Brother Malik, and um, he'll be speaking on the topic more when we all, when we open up the discussion. And we also have uh, Suzanne Wang, who's all the way in Hawaii on the Big Island. Uh, Suzanne, welcome. Hello, everyone. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Yeah. All right. So um, just a few housekeeping rules. If you happen to be unmuted and um, somebody is in conversation, please just mute yourself um, because uh, we might be technically challenged uh, being engrossed in the discussion. So just uh, be mindful of um, the, your background noise or noise on your computer or desk or whatever. And um, in the event that um, you have a question, you could either type it into the into the chat, and I will uh, I will be pay attention to the chat as we go along, or you could raise your hand in the chat if you know how to do that, or simply wave on the screen, and I'll be able to to note your 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 um to, to pay attention to that if that makes sense. All right, so are we ready to get into this? Let's do it. All right. So as I said, I'm your host, Victor Marizenge, and I know both these artists who are panelists today, and I'm honored to have them on. And um, when, when we came up with this idea with Jason Wes, it then struck me, who do I invite onto the panel? And for a couple of days, I thought about it. And reaching out to the community, um, Brother Malik came through, and I, I was like, of course, yeah, I mean, why not? You know, so. so it, it, it struck me how easily we get isolated and consumed in other business and forget where we are and what we have. So personally, that's what I'll say about what the, the situation has brought to me. And um, it's just made me value the connections I have and the time I've had with those connections and realize that it can be taken away in an instance. Suddenly I can't exhibit, I can't go and look at art, you know, and um, it's been um, a journey of self-discovery, but mostly I'm grateful that I've got the creativity. So that's kept me going. And I'm happy that I can look at it from uh, like a fly on the wall and just observe because we as artists, at least I speak for myself, have that ability to be detached from the situation and just be observers of it. With that being said, I would like to pass it on to Brother Malik, who I highly respect, and um, uh, take it away, Brother Malik. How is the the first question being? How has shelter in place impacted you and your practice? Sorry, you're muted again. All right. There All you. right, yeah, I'm here. All right, so how has it impacted? Um, I've been able to actually make some strides at home that I haven't been able to make strides with. Um, <clears throat> you know, normally I'm a very much, uh, I'm a get up and move and shaker type person. I 
try to get out and uh, be involved in the community a lot. And I've done it most of my, uh, I, and my entire adult life has been engaged in community activism, uh, along with my art and things of that sort. Um, however, uh, when, when the um, in place uh, process came, it actually brought me back to a time in my life where I used to lock myself down on purpose. I would literally lock myself down, turn down the shades, close the door, and literally like work on art for like, I'm gonna work on a whole week and just not come out, you know? Uh, this is when I was younger, when I didn't have to worry much about bills and things like that. And uh, I had a lot of old friends as a young artist who had these troubles and I was like, man, they would say, well, you know, you're so serious about your art now, you should take advantage of just being able to do your art practice now. So I became sort of um, an avid artist at a very young age. And so uh, uh, right now by not being so young, but still being young in spirit, uh, um, I have been able to sort of reap the benefits of being able to meditate, being able to uh, spend time with my family. I built my first kitchen floor. That's one thing there. Uh, I was able, I, had to, I did a uh, nail down. So I didn't do the tongue and groove. For those of you who may know about floors, I literally uh, nailed down, stained each one. Me and my son worked really diligently. It was probably one of the most, uh, uh, um, aside from getting them through high school, the uh, one of the most um, challenging, uh, um, I wouldn't say challenging, but more so uh, rewarding. Yes, the most rewarding, re uh, most rewarding uh, process, you know, in terms of uh, just looking at it. I just looked at it as a huge art project, you know. But definitely had to hurry up and get it done, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, we had to get the kitchen back together, you know. So that place here uh, and uh, so I have uh, been uh, struggling emotionally and, and energetically wise you know uh, even when I'm creating um, you know I had to stop and then when we were finally able to get out and uh, take a walk I, you know so, you know we didn't know where we were so I was spending so much money going to get groceries and you know did this and that and the you know um, it was just a it's just a plethora of different activity and then i realized that you know no matter what happens this is life and the fact that this is life we just have to live as much as we can and and take advantage of all the inhales and exhales as much as possible and you know a lot of times we have to fall in love with our faith uh, I, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, the other maybe 0.1% uh, is for introspect, <laughs> to look at it a little deeper, you know, but uh, that's been my practice there. You know, my practice is just really uh, coming into that and, you know, having to have the conversation that African-Americans have to have with their young males and any, you know, I would say any family would have with their young male coming a teenager. Uh, but my, my son is now 20 years old. He's not a teenager anymore. You know, he's a young man. And uh, so I have to have those conversations with him on how to be in the public. And he has no problem with that. I think with him, he's more of an introvert. I just tell him to be careful of that too, you know, so it's it's uh it's it, it's a sticky situation but you know we're we're with the, with my family we're plugging through and so i have to say that uh i'm i'm well but you know we're we're working a day at a, one day at a time awesome can you all hear me i can hear yes you. i can hear you okay great 
Um, thank you so much, Brother Malik. Um, uh, that was beautifully put. And just to sum up what I got from it, so basically you had been self-quarantining uh, on and off for, for a long time. So this didn't really come as a surprise for you. No. Because, okay, wow. And also what I got is that um, your practice afforded you the, that routine that you could go into work. You had a work ethic. So that's something that kept you going also. The yeah. point I, I also resonate with is that you had to balance family and, and work. You're yeah. being there, but not being there. Yeah. So that was such an interesting thing. So thanks so much for that. Um, we will come back to, to our participants with questions if they mm -hmm. have questions to ask. And so if you have questions, please just put them in the chat and we will attend to those once we're, we're done with our panelists. Um, some very interesting points there I would like to circle back on. Right? Okay. Thanks so much, brother. Um, yes. Moving on to our second panelist, we've got Suzanne Wang and she's uh, all the way in Hawaii, Big Island. Suzanne, welcome. She's Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, hi. hi what was it? Did you ask a question? I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute. Okay. Um, I was just welcoming you to the panel and um, uh, saying you're, you're on the Big Island. Yeah, the, I um, live on the Big Island. I've been here for about 10 years. Um, I originally am from the Bay Area. Okay. Um, I went to school there and also in New York City, um, and I've spent time living in China and Connecticut before relocating to Hawaii, and I'm a ceramicist, so I make um, functional and sculptural work, so I guess I would say I'm more like an artist craftsman, um, and uh, I actually, my studio is in my home, but I also fire my work. I have another kiln that I share with another person in the town of Hilo, which is like 20 minutes uh, by car. Um, but I live in the country, uh, right close to the ocean between two rivers. And it's very idyllic and peaceful here. Um, almost like um, the people that live here or that come to my village feel like it's like going back in time. Like, 50 years or something because <laughs> it's an old plantation village. Um, they used to be all sugar cane fields here, sugar, sugar industry. Um, so yeah, so I've been here and um, it's been like a, yeah, a transformative three months for me. Um, and I kind of see uh, this period sort of as a blessing for my just for my personal and artistic development, but it's also been really difficult at times. And, um, you know, like a roller coaster. Sometimes, you know, I'll have like a few weeks of like productivity and then I will feel um, like this wet blanket thrown over me. And I think what I've noticed through this whole COVID thing and with the protests, um, one thing that I've been doing is reaching out to old friends from different parts of the world because this this is a global thing and um, I have friends in Europe and Asia um, that, you know, I've been in touch with more and more in these last three months and it's been really interesting, like we're all going through the same thing. Um, whether you're an artist or not, like it's almost like this collective um, pain and also growth and transformation so uh i've really felt that you know with everybody and it's it's so interesting because we're thousands of miles away in different cultures but yet there is like this thread um so i think that's it's important you know for, for my development um and one thing that I've done that has been really um, helpful as an artist is um, I have this friend, she's from Belgium, but she got stuck in Mallorca in Spain. And we're both sort of at the beginning stages of our careers and um, trying to establish ourselves. And because we're both not near any family, we're alone in our houses uh, during the quarantine. 
what we decided to do is to um, check in daily, uh, check in weekly. Every week we call each other. And so one day I'll call her and we'll do video chat for like a couple hours and we'll talk about her work. And she'll just unload all the things that she's struggling with or do a show and tell, or we'll just talk business, marketing, like anything that's related to her work and what she's going through. And then the next day, because she's 12 hours ahead, we talk about my work. And so it's become this like um, routine for us. And it's been really, really helpful, especially if you're not around other artists, you know, physically, to have somebody that you can count on to just um, to just share things. And so both during this last two or three months, we both made like short videos or she had somebody film her and we'll just work through everything together. And because I totally trust her aesthetic and her opinions and, you know, viewpoints on, on art and design, it's been really, really helpful for me. So if that, you know, helps other artists, like that's an advice that I would give to, to find, you know, if you don't have a mentor, just find um, a colleague that has um, similar aesthetic sensibilities as you to help work through some of your struggles that you might be going through. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, my takeaways are community has been has been elevated in your in your case where you're communicating with friends and um, getting more in touch with people and also connectivity that we're all going through the same thing at the same time so suddenly there's this one commonality across the the globe mm -hmm. which is very very rare i mean yes. since the the flu pandemic this is something totally unique to to this generation so that being said I would really like to probe deeper into you, um, you both as artists. Uh, feel free to pop on this one. As artists, how do you, how, what do you think you see as being the outlook here, not only for yourselves, but as for society in general? Since you are, since as artists, we are the, we are the observers and uh, commentators of society. How, how do you view um, what will come of this? Who would like to go first? Me? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, um, I think, you know, in this past year, we've seen technology change things, changing so fast. It's been kind of hard to keep up. Um, but what is really obvious, especially through COVID, is like the need for connection and um and so i think that um as artists you know finding these new ways to engage with our audience and connect with people through technology is kind of interesting i mean like i do my work is very tactile like it's pottery and people use it and you would never think that um you know, people would buy, I, I used to think like five years ago, like, oh, you, you know, it'd be hard to sell ceramics online because you need to touch it and feel it. Um, but I think that with video and with storytelling, um, and you can see that, you know, with podcasts and just how this has evolved in the last few years, like um, the, the journey, the story is, is really important. And so there are ways where you can um, connect with people um, even though you're not seeing the thing in person, um, those methods of communication and visual storytelling are becoming quite powerful. And I think that as artists, or as me as an artist, like I uh, want to de develop that further um, and keep honing that within my work and how I convey my work and express it. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Brother Malik. All right. I want to make sure I, I hear your question clear so I can go right at your question. So. Go on. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure I heard what you had asked. 
uh, prior to going on. So I wanted to make sure I knew what that was. Okay. Um, so go ahead. So um, the question was, uh, where, do, where do you think we're going from here? What's the outlook? Well, you know, it's, it's a, you know, here's the thing that during the COVID, uh, you know, a uh, lockdown process, uh, a series of things took place that took things for a spin and a change. And uh, I am, uh, I'm, I'm right now in the world that I'm in as a uh, African American uh, male that I never thought I'd live to actually see. Uh, so, it, uh, those events that took place uh, uh, gave the nation and the world enough time to sit down and actually process that, okay, wait a minute, this is inhumane, this is not right. And we're also dealing with the fact that, you know, you have someone who is supposed to be leading is actually doing their own thing and not necessarily uh, uh, totally taking the position of leadership so it's been a uh, it's been something that has uh, I mean today uh, I, you see me all I'm inside my house I'm still bundled up and everything I just came back from working on the mural I am actually now officially a Black Lives Matter muralist I never thought there would be such a thing but uh, the uh, where I uh, worked on a, a mural that's about uh, three blocks long. And then uh, last night, I got another call to do a mural that's gonna be nine blocks long. So uh, th these, uh, and this is just really making, uh, you know, just doing a simple phrase, Black Lives Matter. The great thing is, is that there's a lot of community engagement. I am a person of community engagement. Voila, I got what, I, what I've been wanting to do, you know. Uh, but also there's a process. And the great thing about the process is that it creates an organized culture of existence of why, the way that people should be. So there's something you have to do before you approach someone, right? There's something you have to prep and get ready for. If you're really gonna talk to someone, they're saying, you know, you should have a mask and those different types of things. But it's great to kind of get the world to pause before you just, you know, reach out is really a conscious effort that I'm actually going to come and talk to you. You know, I've always been a verbal person and communicative. Uh, I just, like I said earlier in my earlier uh, message where I talked about uh, finding my dad, looking for my father, I actually found him and found that I had, you know, 18 aunties and uncles, you know, where I come from here in California, I only had people, 10 family members I can count on my hands. You know, I was the first child born outside of the South. Uh, so um, me, uh, you know, it, it was quite an interesting time to be in. And right now, uh, the current thing, you know, I've been teaching on Zoom. So now I know Zoom very well. I used to hear about it, it was foreign to me. And now I know Zoom, like I can teach about Zoom now, <laughs> you know. So um, from, uh, I've learned a lot of interesting things that I probably would not know had we not be put in this position. So there's, you know, I always call it lim lemon meringue pie. It's sour and sweet all in one. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you so much. I'll yes. try to sum that up, um, though of course I could never encapsulate <laughs> everything you said but what yeah. really struck me is um how wh how we now prepare to talk to somebody you know you yeah. put on your mask and you know and i take that as a metaphor to say don't spread don't spread your germs you know absolute germs yeah. and clothes you know to for, for me it's um this period has sensitized me to to how i approach people and how they approach me you know yeah. my personal space has become more activated um but the beauty of it like you said opportunities have come out of it and like yeah. suzanne said suzanne said technology has really jumped into the forefront and opened up other avenues for us to explore as artists so i'm, I'm really excited that um 
there is a positive spin coming out of this sourness. And uh, we, we, we're seeing um, you thrive, more opportunities coming to you, and the work goes on. So that's really a beautiful way to, to um, sum it up and open it up for questions. So at this juncture, I would like to thank you both for your comments and both inspiring for, from both ends. Um, and now I would like to open up the floor if there's anybody who would like to ask questions or make a comment. We are now open. No? All right. So while people think about it, if you don't mind my sharing, um, personally, I'm a father of two, divorced for three years. So this pandemic hit as I was just healing. And I lived with a family and um, an elderly uh, family. And it just dawned on me that because we don't know anything about the virus, I could be putting them in danger. You know, if anything happens to them, God forbid, I would be the one, you know, I, would, I couldn't live with that. So responsibility fell on my shoulders so heavy that I sacrificed everything to, to look for another place. And for me, it was, it was a hard decision to make, but um, just the idea of harming another human being, unintentionally so, was something I couldn't bear. But at, by the same token, when I look at it, it's the unity, the way people have been brought together, the way um, people communicate more, is there has been such a positive spin out of this whole uh, whole endeavor. So that's my piece on that. Um, who, does anybody want to add to the discussion? Yeah, I actually have a thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, back to what Malik was saying earlier about how, I, I, I don't, I think, I feel like he touched on it, but uh, just the, the, the fact that the pandemic hit and, and, and then the series of lives that were lost and we're not in the normal state where we're like, you know, getting up, going through our routine, getting to work, da -da -da, like, or whatever it is we usually do. Everything has stopped. And then, and so these things have happened before. And then, yeah. and then they're gone because, you know, it just, it seems like they happen, they go away. Um, you, you're outraged and then, and then it right. happens again. And then you get caught back up into life and, and it's like over and over and over again. But this time it feels like we're all sitting around digesting it, you yes. know? And, um, it's yeah, it's been a real roller coaster too. I've been trying to make as much art as possible and and get out my emotions and how I'm feeling, you know, through that and keep busy with that and and like um Suzanne said, you know, I have weeks where um you know, I just feel like I con I could conquer the world, you know. I'm doing I'm volunteering, I'm I'm working my ass off, I, I'm doing all these things and then I'll it'll you know, just hit me and I will not want to get out of my bed and I'll just be like everything seems so monotonous and I just, I don't want to, you know, participate anymore. And, and then I have to wait for that to go away and then, and then lock myself away, like Malik said, and let myself be creative too. I don't know if that, that's kind of all over the place with that, but those are just my thoughts on what you guys said. <laughs> Got you. Beautifully put. <laughs> um, I, I feel, uh, I, I feel I should, I should, talk about I, I usually don't like to talk about um, personal issues but um, like brother Malik said this time where we had nothing else to do but sit around you know you you couldn't go anywhere no dis limited distractions you you're focused and for for once we were faced with um, something we could not run away from you know mm -hmm. something that had happened before something we had to confront and deal with. And for the first time in quarantine, I saw myself for who I was, you know. I was separated by distance and, and by, by time from being George Floyd. 
mm -hmm. you know, just simply because of the skin of my, uh, the color of my skin. And that shook me to the core. And to, to the point that I began to ask, what does this all mean? You know, where do we stand in this world as black people? Who are my friends? Who are my connections? Who do I trust? Who don't I trust? You know, what's the mark of the beast? How do you tell? And all I wanted to see was see that officer's eyes. That's all I wanted to see. I wanted to see what the eyes of a killer looked like. Mm -hmm. And um, I looked for, I waited for his picture. I waited for it. And, and it dawned on me that, you know, the ideas we spin, some of them take a life of their own and become our automatic habits, you know? And this is a time where we're faced with a choice. Do we undo old ideas? Do we face them and undo them? Do we face the reality that, yeah, I have to talk to my kids. I have to tell them, this is dad, you know? This is dad in America. And tomorrow might be a different day, you know? So as an artist, I began to look at my work and saying, okay, what's my next piece going to be about, you know? Is it going to be about um, the allies who have spoken up? Is it going to be about my daughters who are mixed? What am I going to tell them? You know, what am I going to tell my African-American brothers about our, our connection? I'm African. You're African-American. I'm neither African-American nor African anymore because I've been away from Africa too long. I'm not from America. I'm caught in between. I'm a drifter. So at the end of the day, what does it all mean? And um, I just came to the conclusion that the purity of your heart is what will carry you. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed to be surrounded by people who have got, who've got purity in their hearts. Who, so I'll, I'll end it there because uh, where does this end up? I, I want to say that uh, it's really the cause of being a earthling. <laughs> I don't think any of us have heard that in a while since cartoons, right? <laughs> earthling, to be a earthling, you know? And so it's not so much about being a, tr a drifter. You know, the, the first group of people to circumnavigate the globe were called crossers. And it, it just simply mean, meant someone who crossed the globe, who crossed the sea, who crossed the landmass, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, when we get into the po politics of placement, uh, we begin to create a circumstance for a perspective that's beyond our own psychological reach a lot of times because, you know, we're dealing with a body in an august group, a small knit group of people who are deciding who's going to be what at what time, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it all changes, you know, when uh, you're yeah. riding a Lexus or you're driving, uh, driving a broken down Ford, right? So, so... If you're driving a broken down Ford, you might look a little different. But if you're driving a nice shiny Lexus with the nice shiny windows and rims, you know, you might look a little different. You might even get approached different. And me, I've worn, you know, the best of suits and uh, and everything. Um, I'm more I more love wearing my art clothes. But uh, when I have to get dressed up, I can get dressed up. Uh, and I've and I've felt the difference, you know, a friend of mine by the name of Bayate, he was, he's a great artist who uh, has done this huge uh, project called the Black Male Project. And, um, and his project is in every museum throughout the, throughout the world, actually. Uh, he had a project where he had black males asking questions about what it means to be a man. And so, and this is just black males from all walk of, walks of life. Uh, and he has, you know, celebrities and everything, but somehow he thought I should start it. And so when you go in and you look at it, I'm, my face without the gray is there asking the question. And he told me one day when we were talking on Instagram, because we hadn't talked to each other in years, he said, you know, um, I, I just wanted to make sure you knew that, you know, you're in every major museum throughout the world. 
And I had to double look. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, what's what's the joke here? You know, he's like, no, man, you're in. You know, we uh we got that we got that uh the the the, in, the installation in all of the major museums. And I said, okay, that's wow. It kind of released something in my head, you know, because as artists, we're working so hard to just be seen by these institutions. I mean, in this point, I don't have any art in there. My face is in there. I'm, part of an art project. So maybe I'm the acrylic on the canvas, right? But um, but in the process of this, it just kind of opened up a lot of things. You know, I always say that your perspective guides your perception, which leads to your predicament. Now, that's a difficult thing when we're dealing with a world where uh, uh, a man's trying to get his life together. We don't know, you know, I, I've, I've done some homework on it. And it seems like they have had, they worked in the same place at a same at a certain time, but I've never met the individuals. But when I saw the face of Mr. Floyd, uh, I saw something in me. And I think that's what we see when we meet people genuinely. When you meet someone genuinely, you actually meet a part of yourself, mm. you know? Uh, and so, well, as we meet new people, we actually come to know more about ourselves. And sometimes, many times, people who don't get outside of the circle of their in, inner their inner circle, fear draws up because, hey, I don't even know this individual. How does he feel so close to me? I think push back. I'm going to say something to push back, you know that type of thing, you know, or I'm going to do something to say, you're not a part of me. Maybe I have that struggle with my own self, you know? So these are all of the different things that kind of go through our minds, but us as creators, as artists, as makers, we're agents of imagination. You know, we are the ones who decide how someone is going to imagine, you know, if they see a piece of artwork of any of ours, if those of us, I see a young man, he's, He's on the uh, right in the studio, right where I want to be. Amazing spot, by the way, right? <laughs> and, yeah, exactly, right? So my mantra is remain creative, right? Because the mantra, if, if we take the mantra of remaining creative, now we have the decision to be human because the first human activity is to be creative, yeah, that's you know? And then after that, we create relationships. We create things, we practice doing that by building relationships at home. Hopefully we have a good bustling family that supports that. And then we go into the world and we create the same exact thing that was created at home. So that says a lot about the homes of America. You know, I mean, who are we today? Who are, I think we're more human than we've ever been. And that's what you're seeing uh, on your screen. I think that's what you're feeling in your heart when you say, oh, what is this crazy thing happening? And I say it's called being an earthling, being human on earth. Wow. <laughs> Very <laughs> eloquently put. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Whew, so many takeaways, but I won't go into that because Wes has <laughs> had his hand raised. So Wes, just one second, sir. I have to, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I, first, I, I just want to say that uh, I am really uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. And uh, the uh, Malik and Suzanne you're, you're, and Victor, all of you have brought so much uh, uh, really uh, fantastic viewpoints and um, some very interesting stuff to the discussion. So I, I, I wanted to thank you for uh, sharing this stuff because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, – to, to come around back to something that Susan had mentioned um, earlier. And, uh, and I think a thing that's affecting uh, a lot of artists, um, is since uh, we can't um, really, there's not really anywhere to show work anymore. You know, like our, you know, we have a little studio that we open up as a gallery. We can't, we haven't opened since February. Um, and you know, there's, you can't go out and see art anymore. Um, so for artists who, are trying to sell work, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's hard enough when people can actually see your work to sell work, but then uh, to, to, you know, to try to get it like, so, 
So, Stan, you're saying that, um, you know, that it's difficult as uh, to sell ceramics, which uh, over, but that you said uh, video and uh, being able to kind of tell the story and, and describe a little bit um, was helping. And I, and I thought that was very interesting. And I, I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about um, how, what your, what tools are you using to, uh, and how are you, how have you changed kind of how you present your work with that, with that video and stuff? Oh yeah, I think she's muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, uh, for I can only speak for myself, but I'm actually um, in the process of rebuilding my website, and so, um, but also just from using Instagram and using the video stories, and it's so easy to make videos now on an app like on Vimeo or iMovie and they don't need to be very long. Um, I think that's a way to, there's a way that we as artists can learn and start practicing to tell our own stories and we don't need to spend thousands of dollars to hire somebody to do it for us. You know, it can be, um, yeah, you can explore all that. You can do it very quirky or it could just be like simple or you can just be talking to yourself like a like a um, journaling. Um, but I think there's so much potential to explore that realm and to share uh, what you want to say by capturing these things um, through video um, and then uh, editing it editing it in a certain way so that it's uh, concise and like effective and people get right away what you're trying to convey um so what i'm i still have yet to see how this is going to work out but i think on my website in the future um the way it's going to look it's not just going to be static images of product or artwork it'll be um, snippets of moving images um, and I have to work I'm working with the designer but to me that's it's more like you're entering a world instead of like a website with just you know um, so I think that is exciting to me and I want to explore more of that I've looked at a lot of artists websites and usually you know, we're so busy making, we just want to make, we don't want to be dealing with all that website, you know, product descriptions and pricing and all that stuff. But at some point, you know, um, somebody has to do it or you have to think about it and, and, and know what you want to, how you want to present yourself. Um, and so I think we're entering hopefully a new phase or realm where um, as creators that in order to sustain a living, we have to sell our work. And so how that presents itself to people is going to be more and more important. Yes. Um, so I've, I've been, I've, I've been sort of talking with people about that and thinking about that, um, in terms of, you know, being a working artist, making a living. Thanks so much, Suzanne. Um, it's almost 8.30, so what I'll do is, initially I told Jess and Wes that, nah, I'm too tired. I don't want to stay around here too long. Mm -hmm. But what we'll do is um, we'll round it up now, but we'll allow the discussion to roll on, people to just interact, but we'll officially just close it off. And um, so firstly, I'd just like to thank everybody who came. I would like to really thank um, Suzanne and Malik for agreeing to do this without knowing what it's about. Um, I, I deeply respect that because you trusted me and you just came along and did, uh, did what I asked without asking what it is. <laughs> and, um, the last takeaway I have, I would really like to tie it up beautifully because, uh, Suzanne, if you don't mind, I want to share something we discussed before okay. in a, a couple of weeks back and tie it to what Brother Malik said. Uh, Brother Malik, you mentioned building really relationships. Um, and in the home and then carrying those relationships into the world. And you summed it up by saying, what kind of homes do we have in America? Who are we in America? I think that's such a it's powerful question for us to ask because whether we like it or not, 
we are all Americans. And um, we, my pain will be your pain because that's how it works. You can't see pain and not feel it. You know, you can't ignore that. We're connected, we're interconnected. And I'd like to tie, uh, tie that back to what Suzanne said in a discussion we had some time back about finding resources in your community simply by talking to people. You find somebody is a graphic designer, is a web designer. And I would like to mention that um, that community aspect is helping you, Suzanne, achieve your dream now because people with skills around you are helping you realize that, right? And Brother Malik, I've known you for some time, and I would just like to say for those who don't know uh, Malik, he's just the most generous guy. He's really wise and generous with his wisdom also. He will give you the time to speak to you if you would like to get in a conversation. And the wisdom that you have given me over the years, um, I don't know if you know it, but we met at the Arte in Alameda, uh, by Studio 23 some years back and I was new to America and your words of wisdom really gave me a foundation to say, you know what, there's somebody you can call on. So just that sense of community you gave me was so powerful in my moment of need. And I just like to applaud you for, for the leadership you're providing, not only to the youth, but also to the community, your kindness and your, your, Okay, I won't go on about that. Um, at that juncture, I would just like to say thank you all for coming through to this discussion. At some point, I was hesitant to, to go through it because the last thing I wanted to do is bring depression into people's homes. Mm -hmm. And um, with Zoom, you know, I'm in your home, you're in mine. You know, those boundaries have been, have been crossed. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for the positive energy you brought through. I was tired, I was done for the day, but you guys just uplifted me and thank you. With that being said, we're officially off the record and the party begins. <laughs> thank you all for coming and I really appreciate what you did for us. Yeah, yeah I'd like to thank everybody too. That was real. I was feeling the same way, just beat, tired, exhausted. Oh. And uh, it's nice to it's nice to communicate with other artists and listen to what's going on, you know, with other artists and how they're pushing through this. It's really helpful. Great. All right. Yeah. So with that, we'll say our goodbyes. Where we come from, we have to say goodbye and um, go well in your journey because we never know, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, if anybody wants to look at, sorry, Suzanne, if anybody wants to look at Suzanne or Malik's work, they can go to second Friday, uh, FridayArtWalk.com, and they're listed there and on uh, social media, too. Just saying. Oh, great. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, oh, I just wanted to say, like, you know, the protests and everything, um, I don't. I think I talked about it. Maybe not everyone was on the on the on the Zoom meeting, but there's been a lot of things happening in, in Hawaii too, and um, but it's been such a great. I just feel like uh, for me, just finding new definitions um, and, and 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 to talk about race racism and and the discomfort in it has been like a. It's just been a great opportunity to like we just started a book club we're going to read you know how to be an anti-cis and there's it's been so much dialogue for people um especially people that are white and and it's even for asians you know it's just i think even though there's been so much horrible things that have happened i see a positive that's coming out of this and um i have to hold on to that hope you know Amen. Beautiful. Wow. All right. Well, hello, Harry. Hello, Sherry. <laughs> oh, you're muted. So let me just unmute everybody so that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, unmute. Anything. So, um, yesterday, yesterday I moved where, one. Where I you, moved where, the portrait oh. one over because it was in the sun, and I didn't want that to happen. So, <laughs> oh, wow. great to see you. Yeah, it is. Great see to see too. you. Love your. I just love your work. It's just wonderful. Uh, 
Awesome. Thank and you. I'm very fortunate to have had one of the early ones when That's you first right. came here, right? <laughs> I'm honored. Really honored. Oh, it's wonderful. Good to, good to see you. This was really, really fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Malik, thanks so much for uh, sharing your, your experiences and stuff. I really enjoyed it. Suzanne, it was wonderful uh, meeting you and uh, hearing about it. And Victor, as always, you do a, an amazing job. Uh, so everybody just, should definitely thank you so you. much. Everybody should definitely take a chance to check out Malik's artwork. We actually have a piece of Malik's artwork. Um, <laughs> and he's amazing. So yeah. I know you'll really enjoy checking it out, too. It's beautiful. So. Did, did we miss a video of her work? Because we we've the, only just tuned we in. We missed the whole thing. Did we, did we miss the video? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there are links to their, to their website. Oh, okay. okay. FridayArtWalk.com, so you can check out their art there. Too. Oh, I will. Absolutely. Yes. Time, time means nothing to us. <laughs> <laughs> what day is it? What day is it? Oh, you mean it's Friday? Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. well, um, I'd just like to mention that uh, Suzanne has also a fantastic video that documents her residency right um, um yeah i did an apprenticeship in japan uh, a couple years ago wow. and um there uh there was like 11 minute documentary that was um filmed for hawaiian airlines oh so okay. it just you know shows me going to japan and studying under a master potter there so oh. um you can find it on my website oh great so this will be on the second Friday videos that are available. Is that correct? It, yeah, it'll be on the links to their sites are on the FridayArtWalk.com site. Oh, perfect. Okay, oh, okay, great. Definitely. Mm. All right. It's so at beautiful. this point, I'm going to shamelessly plug <laughs> just to <laughs> ask you guys to, to carry this note with you, this mental note. In this time where people are in need of conversation, there are voices that can be heard because they speak with a tone that can be digested. Then there are voices that cannot be heard. I would like to introduce to you a voice that can be heard, speaks from a place of wisdom, love, and care. And if you ever need somebody to speak on life, please contact Brother Malik. He is, he is a fantastic teacher. I kid you not. And when I say teacher, you know, when somebody sits down with you and for three minutes and then you're like, oh, that's what it's about. <laughs>